Hmm, what game should I switch to next, guys? <laughs> Here, I'll just put on some of this soundtrack on. Or no. While I while I decide what to game to switch to here. Trying to exit out of Resident Evil 6 here. There we go. I think, I think, I think, I think I might, I might start up um, a visual novel. I'm just gonna update the title, guys. Oof! What's with the oof? Visual novels? Don't like visual novels? Are great. No, I love them. <laughs> Sup, just Rex. I'm just swapping games right now um, and, and uh, putting in a title <laughs> or updating the title here. Is in here? Yes. Sorry, I'm very slow at updating things. Make this a let's play. I don't really know what to expect of this one, so it'll be interesting. It's always, it's always fun when I'm playing a blind game. And I have no idea what to expect. The only thing I know about this game is that it's um, uh, by the same people who did Steinsgate. So 
that alone is pretty interesting. Steins Gate is one of my favorite uh, anime VNs. Movie quality low, you. You shouldn't have that. Okay, start. And uh, hello everyone, how's, how's everyone doing? Oh no, did I mute this? I might have muted it. Oh no, not muted. Oh, oh crap. That's not muted. <laughs> Trippy out. <laughs> Tripping out. <laughs> so we're playing Chaos Child. I don't know if this is a... Uh... Oh crap, what happened? Okay, my headphone decided to recheck with me. Oh, VN game. Yes, Mr. Bombastic Man, a VN game. I thought uh, after uh, RE6, which is a very action heavy game, I thought I'd uh, start playing something more chill. New game. So I've never played this game. I don't know what to expect. Let's see. It's supposed to be like kind of horror based or there's like murder kind of mystery. What is my headphones doing? It keeps flipping out on me. Hold on. It keeps toggling in and out for me and it's like interrupting the game. Okay, headphones, why? November 6, 2009, AD, 1028 p.m. It came without warning. What is going on? What? My headphones keep kicking in. Okay, yes. I wonder if I might need to restart my computer. There we go. Also, hello, copy verb. I don't know if I said hello to you earlier, but hello, hello again. That doesn't look good. It was a magnitude 7.8 earthquake with an epic center directly under the city. This disaster reduced one of Tokyo's busiest downtown areas to nothing in a single night. Oh hi, didn't see you there. Fancy meeting you here. The high-rise buildings that had birthed so many trends and fads collapsed, as if giving up on their role in society. Black fires spread through the city. As individuals fell into the grip of the crowd's psychology, their terror was magnified. Combined, all of these things took many lives. <laughs> that mob mentality. The final death toll was 3,851. The final number of injured, 30,927. This event would later be known as the Shibuya Earthquake. Even in all that destruction, people still suffered the most in their hearts. Some who had lost their families came together to share new resolve, while others who had been forced to watch their friends die were driven by guilt to take their own lives. Really? Suicide? As a baby was miraculously united with his parents after 72 hours, a child in an evacuation center asked her dad, When's mommy coming home? He had no answer. Some of the wounded made it to the hospitals by looking at real-time updates on the web. Others saw people on the internet talking about the disaster as if it were a movie, and were driven mad. 
A homeless man was saved from malnutrition by an organized volunteer group, but at the same time, a middle school boy punched a self-centered volunteer who'd come to Shibuya to find himself in the face. It was the first time in that boy's life he'd ever been violent. The psychological toll was incredible, and many of the survivors would later manifest system symptoms similar to those associated with PTSD. The young were hit the hardest, and before long, the cause of those symptoms were given a name. Chaos Child Syndrome. Rebuilding happened at a feverish pitch, never seen before. It felt inappro uh, inappropriate to say, hang in there, but people felt that somebody had to do something. The new slogan was Shibuya, a city reborn, and no amount of money or manpower was spared in aiding the endeavor. The whole town was in a grip of a fever. In private, a leader of the redeve redevelopment effort said, This may sound unkind, but this frenzy feels like a town burying its grief by holding a festival. Building codes were rigorously evaluated with an eye towards earthquake engineering, perhaps in an effort to em emphasize the city's safety. Security cameras were put up all over town. Shibuya would become a place where everyone could live in peace. But at the same time, a rumor began to spread about the earthquake. Something about this earthquake doesn't make sense. There was no aftershocks, and the damage had spread in a strange way. Harajuku and Ebisu, areas only a kilometer away from Shibuya, suffered few casualties and even fewer collapsed buildings. This damage pattern had never been observed in any prior earthquake, and so more than a few pundits claimed that Shibuya earthquake must have been artificial. More than anything, some of the survivors all said the same things. I saw a white light. I heard a sound like a ringing in my ears. Too many people experienced this for anyone to laugh it off, but no cause of those phenomena were ever found. It was just more evidence to those who believed that something about the earthquake had been wrong. Then, six years after the strange earthquake in 2015, something else was about to attract attention in the reborn city of Shibuya. I was trying to read the tagline. It was so English. I saw something about noids. Uh, September 7th, 2015, Sunday night. Hey, I'm going The second he spoke, the comment box started to fill. Yuma Uotani watched it for a few seconds, and then saw the request. When does Haru tell us she's dating somebody? He smiled to himself. Just what he wanted. Most of the requests were about hot actors or cute idols. His audience was so stupid that it was easy to tell exactly what they were going to ask. The problem was always whether the name that came up was someone he knew. That was a question of luck, and of how popular they were. But Haru? Her full name was Haruko something or other. She was fine. Just a few days ago, he'd forced himself to go to an event he'd rather have skipped and seen it for himself. Yes. Satisfied, Old Tiny got up to get some snacks, like he always did. Mmm, snacks. He lived in a one-bedroom condo located 8 minutes from Shibuya Station, cost 50,000 yen per month. It had been built after the earthquake, so the furnishings and layout were modern. A little more room would have been nice, but compared to the 40,000 yen per month place he'd lived in last year, it was heaven. At 21 years old, Ootani felt satisfied for the first time in his life. In fourth grade, he'd gotten big into online gaming and stopped going to school. Eventually, he'd stopped leaving his room altogether. Oh, he's a, he's a hikikimori. <laughs> then he'd gotten addicted to drugs that made him sleepy, but did nothing else. Once seeing only darkness in his future, he'd planned to commit suicide. In the chaos after the earthquake six years ago, he'd finally managed to leave his room. But his family had already given up on him. After he failed his entrance exams, he went to live on his own in Shibuya, and he hadn't spoken to his parents since. As far as they knew, he'd failed the exams three times in a row. In fact, he hadn't even gone to the tests after the first time. There wasn't anything he wanted to learn in college, or any companies he wanted to work for badly enough. He had no goal in life at all. Uh-oh, wait, 
Did you just say hikikimori? Yeah, I did. <laughs> he's, he's totally hikikimori. Or neat. Both things. But things were different now. Cheese. Mm, cheese. He took a block of cheap cheese he'd bought at the supermarket out of the fridge. Usually he never ate anything this cheap. But on Nico and Mia live streaming, it was also, it was it wasn't just what you said. How you looked when you said it also mattered. Orotani wasn't a good looking man, let alone a cute girl. He was just a plain old guy, and so to keep his program popular, he needed to make them think that he was poor, barely managing to scrape by, in fact. That's why he kept the area around his PC and the parts of his apartment that you could see with his webcam completely plain. Last month, he'd finally reached his goal of 4,000 viewers. For a man with nothing going for him like Ootani, this was extremely unusual. Three months ago, he'd guessed the winners of the popularity contest a certain idol group was holding as well as their total number of votes. That must have really paid off. After that, his numbers had been going up steadily. Late last month, when his streams had appeared at the top of Nico Nia's page, he'd seen a huge increase. Right now, he'd gotten above 4,500, and it was quite possible he'd break 5,000 by the end of the month. It was around late last year when he started to wonder about his power. It was a certain rumor on one of Achan's occult boards that had made him really start to realize what he had had. The name he'd chosen for his stream suddenly reflected this. Then I learned that I can see the future. He took out a knife to cut the cheese. There was a strange sound. Huh? He thought he'd just imagine it when... Knock. Knock, knock. Knock. He heard it again. It was coming from the door. Someone was clearly knocking on his door. Huh? Suspicious, he walked towards the door to answer, then checked the clock. It was 11.41 p.m. Not exactly normal delivery hours. Oh, he said jungle. I was like, what is he talking about? So I guess it's a play on Amazon. <laughs> he tried to ignore it. But... It's a very persistent knock. The knocking continued. It was the same rhythm at the same pace. As if the visitor's goal wasn't to come inside, but... Simply to make that sound. <clears throat> Ootani felt a bit creeped out. He decided to go to the intercom camera and see who it was, but then realized that would be pointless. Only the auto-locking door on the first floor had a camera. The door to Ootani's room on the fifth floor had an intercom, but no camera. Ootani gave up. Kse, <laughs> No, the knocks were too steady for that, and there was no voice yelling at him to open up. <clears throat> He'd seen the door a million times, but suddenly it looked somehow different. Someone he didn't know was on the other side of the mall, demanding entry in the middle of the night. Somehow, this made the door seem intimidating. Ootani thought he might look through the peephole to see who it was outside. He was then disgusted to find himself, too scared to even get close to the door. Wait. The intercom didn't have a microwave, or <laughs> a camera, but it did have a microphone. He turned toward the living room so he could see the intercom and find out what they wanted. Oh, Tani, it's me. Sorry to come by so suddenly. He stopped when he heard that voice. Mm. Why didn't it voice out? It's me. I'm so very sorry to bother you at this hour. Ootani tried to remember who the speaker was, but found he couldn't. But from the tone of the voice and the words, they probably weren't a weirdo. When they said, I'm sorry, it sounded like they really meant it. <sighs> Ootani sighed softly with relief and then realized he was still carrying the knife he had been using to cut cheese. It suddenly felt stupid to feel so nervous. He quickly laid the knife on top of the sink. Yes, yes. I'm here. It's me. Don't you remember? The voice simply repeated itself. But who are you? 
Otani whispered to himself as he opened the door. Uh oh. He opened the door. Otani narrowed his eyebrows at the people standing there. He looked them up and down, then looked at their faces again. Their eyes met. This seems bad. Otani suddenly felt a piercing headache. Ootani closed his eyes and put his right hand up to his temple. He could feel the blood pounding in his veins through his fingers. He staggered, quickly put his other hand against the wall to keep from falling over. The pain was like the old days when he'd overdosed on antidepressants, but much more intense. He grit his teeth again against the pain and dug his nails into the wall that was holding him up. As he waited for the pain in his fingers to help dull the pain in his mind, Mr. Otani, are you okay? He heard a voice he'd heard many times before and felt a concerned hand on his shoulder. He'd somehow managed to ignore the pain and open his eyes. A worried face was peering down at him. Overwork, perhaps? You've been so busy lately. You shouldn't push yourself too hard. What? So he saw people there and then suddenly it's someone he knows? He opened his mouth as wide as he could and moaned, trying to ease the pain as he led his important guests inside. As he turned his back on his guests, he told himself that it had been a long time since he'd seen them. Or maybe not? Oh wait, was he hypnotized? <laughs> maybe. It couldn't have been more than two months since they'd last met. It only felt long because he'd wanted to see them so badly. So that. While he was out here, he decided he would cut some cheese for himself and his guests. Oh, don't worry about us. What's wrong? The blade wasn't sitting and cutting into the cheese. That's strange, he told himself as he pushed down with more force. Oh god. Uh, he cut into its surface and it made an unpleasant sound he'd never heard before. But no matter how hard he pushed, it wouldn't go further. Why do I get the feeling that this is going to be really bad, like he's actually cutting something else? Like he's been brainwashed or something into cutting maybe in into himself or something. Confused, he yanked the knife back and forth like a saw, but it only cut in slightly deeper. It was as if there was something hard inside the cheese. And even though he'd only just taken it out of the fridge, it was slightly warm. <coughs> oh my god, he's, he's cutting something with bone in it. <laughs> yeah, bone. Maybe like a finger or something, appendage. Uh, I bet you he's cutting himself. Irritated, he slammed the knife, the handle of the knife against the cheese, but all it did was bash it in a little. He couldn't cut through it. I'll help you. His guests must have, must have heard the sound because they rushed over. They had another knife. When did that, they get that out? There's a trick to cutting this thing. They put the knife up against cheese and began to practice it, or remove it with a practiced hand. It sounds like your work is going well. They smiled at Ootani, their voice, voices slightly low. Ootani realized that they were trying to keep their voices from being picked up by the streaming microphone and lowered his mic voice as well. Ah. He grinned and nodded. His guests had introduced him to a firm that handled advertising space for popular websites which had been giving him regular work. His reputation had quietly spread throughout the small web advertising in industry, and soon he was getting more and more offers. Then why do these streams? That's right. His power wasn't meant to be, to be wasted on jobs that anyone could do. Oh, 
だから自分でやれるだけやってみたいっつうか<笑>ってかっこよすぎかこれは No, it's wonderful, I think, and done. After he'd smacked it a few times, the cheese was a little funny looking, but the even slices were lined out neatly on the plate. It's nothing. Go on. I'll wait until your stream is finished. Oh, Oh god, that's like a that's like a really big package of something. <laughs> Otani took his cheese back to his seat and saw a flood of comments reading, He's late! And did he log off? What should have only been three minutes had turned into more than fifteen. That doesn't look right. <laughs> Looks like an arm or something. Otani put a bite of the cheese in his mouth and began to chew loudly. <laughs> He apologized to the camera and remembering to keep up the act of being poor and starving. And as he hoped, the comments started to come in. <laughs> Nikunia is always like this, right? Reported, this broadcast will end soon. This is making me sick. What happened? I'm very worried, yeah? You trained in Hollywood, I can tell. Lol. Oh, I missed some of those comments. <laughs> Ootani's face took on a confused expression. The comments were strange. He thought there might be something on the camera, but he turned around and only saw his fake poor room. <laughs> he spoke into the camera, but the comments still didn't make any sense and they were coming in faster. Maybe there was a problem with the camera. He reached his right hand out toward it. In an instant, his headache was back. It was the same pain as before. No, worse. He closed his eyes and jerked forward, banging his head against the desk. But the pain in his head was so bad that he didn't even feel it. He tried to hold his head in his hands, but for some reason, his right hand wouldn't move. So instead, he pushed his other hand up against his temple. It felt squishy. The vein was incredibly swollen and it felt like rubber. And each time he felt his blood pulse through it, there was an unpleasant sensation in his fingers. Oh god. He stamped his feet against the floor, hoping to find some small escape from the pain. But it didn't even get slightly better. It was then that he realized he was crying. He could feel the tears coming from his eyes. The pain was moving there now, too. <laughs> Unable to bear it, he opened his eyes. What are we gonna see? What are we gonna see? He gasped. The whole scene appeared in front of him like some kind of awful magic trick. <laughs> he suddenly heard the sound of something wet dripping onto the floor. His eyes reflexively turned towards it. His right arm was gone at the elbow, and the stump was gushing blood. There was a pool of it on the floor, and the sound he heard was a new blurred splattering onto it. Huh? Ootani didn't understand what had happened to him. What was going on? He'd just gone to check on a knock at the door. <laughs> the pain screamed within him. Any sense of pain of what remained of his right arm was overcome by the pain in his head. He felt nothing from his arm at all, though he saw the blood dripping to the floor. What the hell is going on? He blinked and forced his aching eyes to function as he looked around the room. On top of his desk, he found the rest of his arm. It was sitting on a plate. At first it looked like it was still in one piece, but it wasn't. Uh, what are we gonna see? It's not cheese at all. <laughs> it was ne neatly sliced into uniform pieces. Each piece was about a centimeter wide and the piece slices moved neatly towards his fingers. They sat upon the plate in roughly his arm's original shape. Miraculously, he saw there was no blood on the tip of his index finger. <laughs> oh, they're not gonna show the, the, the arm. <laughs> he still didn't understand that it was really his own arm. 
but sheer disgust at what he saw caused him to leap out of his chair. So it's not a finger, but whole ass arm. Alrighty, yep, right up to the elbow. What was this? What kind of prank was this? The contents of his stomach flooded into his mouth. He vomited. The pink fluid splashed against the desk. Ew. Because he was eating some of it, I think. He saw something solid in the middle of it all. It was a thumb. It was covered in bite marks, saliva, and stomach acid, but horribly, he remembered it. What? When had he put that into his mouth? In his pain-filled mind, he suddenly heard a sound he'd never heard before. Oh god, he ate his own fingers. Or thumb. I don't know. Each time he heard the sound, the pain in his head got worse. He turned towards the camera, hoping for an answer to what was happening. But of course there was none to be found. The screen was still filling with comments, but his eyes were too filled with tears for him to read them. As the whole world turned red, Ootani didn't even realize that his lips were turning purple. His lips had turned purple from lack of oxygen, but were strained red with blood from his severed thumb which he had chewed himself. As he tried to fight the pain, he began to fall unconscious, and tears fell from his eyes. The tears seemed pink to him. Ootani was weeping blood. He died, still facing the camera. His guests watched the chain of events unfold, then silently headed for the door. Just before they left the room. Goodbye. They said, as if nothing at all was wrong, and shut the door. God, what the hell? Sick, 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 sick. Talk about desperate to get followers on board. Go back to the usual stream. <laughs> what? Wow. People are heartless. September 19th, 2015. Friday night. <sighs> Momone Takayonagi had finished her concert. Like always, she stayed behind to help, but... Uh, put away the instruments. She even helped clean up the audience seats, even though that was the concert hall's job. Only after all of that was done could she take a break. There wasn't much time left before her solo street concert, but she still had to help anyway. She'd always been like that. Even if it wasn't her responsibility, she couldn't help but get involved. It was like in middle school when one of her friends who wasn't as good at studying asked her for her test notes, or in high school when a girl she knew asked her how to make Valentine's chocolate for a boy she really liked. She stayed up so many nights her own test grades were worse than her friends, and she didn't have even anyone to give chocolate to on Valentine's Day. Sup, Arrow? You're, you're eating sushi? Do you have enough for me, too? In the end, it was the other person's responsibility, not hers, but... Momone Takayanagi was, at heart, afraid of not doing everything she could. Wait. Scared of not doing everything, even if everything wasn't her responsibility. This concert today was another big success. Sure, it was a tiny room that could only fit in 150 people or so, standing room only, but tickets were 3,000 yen. High for a band with an amateur vocalist like her, and they still sold out instantly. It was bizarre how excited the crowd was. She'd heard sobs during the ballad, and during one of the high tempo songs, the audience had stood up all the way to the back row. She felt a chill and hugged herself tightly. It's not that her band wasn't popular. Are we are we gonna get to see characters at all? I kind of thought we would see characters. They started out in the Nikunia Sang It category and had kept going by doing covers of popular anime songs. It helped that her face, which had earned her the nickname Scarecrow in school, could look really good when she wore makeup. And if all of them put on ridiculous costumes and acted like idiots, some people would enjoy that. Videos of their concerts and performances pulled a decent number of views online. Takayanagi noticed. The vast majority of the people looking at the videos were people who'd come to her concerts. People who'd experienced that insane intensity were going back to the videos to try and feel it again. And Takayanagi knew that they probably wouldn't even feel 1% of it. Ticket prices and audience sizes were one thing, but the strangest thing to her were their eyes. 
Their eyes pierced right through her, unblinking. They were like pets, totally dependent on their master. The meaning of the lyrics began to take over their lives, and they never even questioned it. When she first realized that this was happening, she tried to quit the band. Even if she couldn't, she at least wanted to stop doing the live shows where people heard her directly. But the others around her wouldn't let that happen. Your voice is amazing, they would tell her. They forced her to keep singing, even as the concerts began to terrify her. Takaya Nagi tried to get out of it, but in the end, she kept giving in. She owed her fellow band members for getting a plain, dull girl like her into music. And for a while, part of her managed to have fun. But in the end, Takaya Nagi lacked the a tiny bit of courage needed to break out of the cycle. She forced herself to get up and head toward the street concert, which she didn't really want to do. She'd received an email. She read it slowly. She almost dropped her smartphone. She read it again and again, trying to control her shaking hands. It was nothing special, just a simple message about one of the songs she'd made. Good song. Keep it up. <gasps> Takayanagi tried to stop the tears, but couldn't. The band wouldn't get would get too many messages like this to count, especially after concerts. She knew it was rude, but to be honest, she was sick of them. But this email address wasn't for her band. It was one for a site where she had anonymously uploaded original songs. In other words, whoever sent this message hadn't come to her concerts. They'd never heard her voice live or felt its strange power. But they had still said they liked her song. <laughs> Wiping away tears that wouldn't stop, she quickly wrote a response. That makes me really happy. Thank you. Welcome back, Mr. Bombastic Man. You missed a kind of interesting gory part. <laughs> Even after she sent it, she kept crying for a while. She hadn't cried this much since the earthquake. And then she stood up. It still feels like we're setting up the story, though. It's kind of slow paced so far. It's okay. I watched the enemy. She took her costumes for the day's concert out of her bag. Pulled them, balled them up, and threw them in the trash. It was a white caped outfit, worn by some angel character in some anime. Certain fans really loved it, but she didn't care about it at all. She took a wet towel off a nearby table and violently wiped away her makeup. She was never wearing another cape or putting on makeup to look like an anime character again. Never, she said out loud. She realized she was more excited than she'd ever been before. And then, she started to realize what she wanted to do. Uh, I can't say stuff because it might spoil the VN story. They might be the same. They probably might be based on each other. What would happen if she said she was going to quit the band? It caused trouble for a lot of people, definitely. Her band was scheduled to play in the Restoration Festival, but even so... She never wanted to sing at another concert. <laughs> she laughed and kissed her smartphone. She couldn't wait to get home and start fiddling with her music. Over the web, she could really share her music with others. As long as they weren't hearing her voice live, it would be fine. If she just played a recording from a speaker, for example. That's right. She'd leave Shibuya, and when she had a few more songs, she could record them and play them at a street concert. That speaker was small enough that she could fit it under her clothes to fool people. It would be rude to do the same song every time, so each time she'd re-record it at home. Uh-oh, she's getting the same scary knocks at her door. There was a knock at the door. One of the staffers, maybe? <laughs> she smiled and answered them. Now that she'd thrown away her clothes, her bag was lighter than she'd ever imagined it could be. The lightness made her think about the future. She was happy. Hi, hi. Taka Yanagi happily danced toward the door, completely ignorant of what was on the other side. Is this character going to die too? I guess that's why we, we haven't seen her either. Or much of her. September 19th, 2015. Friday night. Shortly after she finished, she was walking through Shibuya. 
She had a limp and dragged one leg behind her as if it were injured. Her bangs were unnaturally long. Most of her face was covered by them. She wore a dark colored dress that seemed to melt into the night, and above it, a bright red cardigan. Her chest, arms, and legs were almost completely covered. Despite the fact that the night was still warm, she wore gloves, as if it were a sin to show any skin at all. She ran into a couple coming out of a hotel and staggered slightly. But she didn't even look at the people she ran into. She looked down and disappeared into the streets of Shibuya. Hello, below average cheese. How are you? We're playing any moo games. Digital native. Alrighty. Achieve and unlock digital native. <laughs> I guess we got to a new chapter. Not much has happened so far, other than that uh, Kikikimori dying. For example, let's say you asked a kid in middle school, do you know what a Schrodinger's cat is? Most would say yes, or I've heard of it. We'll start by eliminating the DQNs who, s who say they've never heard of it. Next you say, well, what was it? Next we eliminate those poor fools who say it's something about a cat in a box, right? Or there's this cat, but you don't know if it's alive or dead, right? Or maybe they say there's a cat in a box and next to it there's a device that may or may not give off poison gas. You don't know if the cat's alive or dead until you open the box. Everybody knows that. We can eliminate those show-offs as well. Anybody from these groups is a wrong sider. The right answer would be to describe the experiment and then say, it was a thought experiment proposed by Schrodinger to criticize the quantum mechanical theory that state collapse only occurs after human observation, but barely anyone can do that. And I'd imagine that I'm the only guy who's still in high school who knows that Schrodinger got the idea after exchanging letters with Einstein. What a show off. <laughs> I hate wrong -siders. I'd taken a break from investigating the two incidents that had occurred recently in Shibuya and was paging through some at channel blog aggregators for a change of pace. As always, articles about bad idols and corporations with terrible work environments were getting tons of hits. It was hard to believe that the crash of 15, a huge news story that had just happened this month, was already off the front pages. Okay, I, I noticed that it said new tip or something at the top. Did the people reading and commenting on these sites realize that everything they read about corporations and idols were carefully controlled? Do I need to keep track of like these tips? Did they know that most of the bad aggregator sites are corporations too? Did they realize that the comments were all manipulated to go one direction or another? Enlightened generation got a new tip. Kids our age were living in a world where all the information you could ever want was right at your fingertips. For those of us in the enlightened generation, ignorance was the worst sin. The ignorant were self-righteous, easily manipulated, and eager to push their paper-thin worldview onto others. They were nothing but a nuisance. The worst of the lot were the so-called otaku. I can't s I couldn't stand otaku. They were wrong siders. Blood Tune. Take the picture on the cover of this magazine. It was from Blood Tune. Any otaku who just watched it for the cute characters was a loser. There was no point in watching the show if you were going to ignore its deeper themes. I couldn't stand people that still held to the old-fashioned idea that only Otaku watched anime, but people who ignored the show's themes and just watched it for the cuteness were even worse. They were ignoring the implicit social criticism hidden in... Nani? This guy's a bit of an elitist, isn't he? I stared at the magazine in amazement. Specifically, I stared at the box that listed the next episode previews. The text said that Aaron was missing. Bakaka! Damn it! I'd let my guard down because I knew this episode was written by the guy who wrote the original manga. How could you remove Eren from the story halfway through? Not keeping around meant bringing up all the internal drama that had been built up so far to a halt. God damn it. Fire up the gambling dot. So much for my change of pace. I knew I had work to do on the case, but I'd put it away because I couldn't find any link between the two crimes. 
I thought for a moment, then took my magazine from its secret stash. It was an issue of an old magazine called Cool Cat Press. Cool Cat Press. <laughs> Frog chat. Lol. Our nose. I was wondering about that comment. I was like, okay, the gambling bat. People called it a dating ga guide for normals written by someone who'd never dated a girl in his life, but you'd be surprised. Stupid. I knew it's stupid, but... When I ran an internet search for their number one phrase, nothing came back. And that was the thing. The fact that it didn't show up on the internet meant, to me, that it was worth something. I know this is extraordinarily selfish of me, but... <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, she said the line. <laughs> oh, now we get to see some characters. I turned to yell at the voice. I hid my favorite magazine behind my back and tried to calm my racing heart. E even if we'd known each other since we were kids, don't just come in like that. I couldn't let her find out. This was bad. Sedika frowned. Huh, that's right. Sedika took a USB memory stick out of her purse. Sedika looked a little confused. She didn't seem to think much of it as she started to copy the data off. Okay, now's my chance. The RV was cramped, but there was a lot of space for storage. I pretended to make tea as they tried to find room on the top shelf. Okay, there's just enough room for one more magazine. And then? I heard a pshu pshu sound like a small fart from behind me. A small fart. I glanced back and saw that Sedeka was using the mouse with one hand and fiddling with her ghetto froggy ghetto strap with the other. This was my chance. Oh, it's this thing. That's from, uh, that's also from, uh, Steins Gate. The Ghetto Fargi from Ghetto Strap was a soft vinyl strap, uh, phone strap I'd- Wait, soft vinyl cell phone strap I'd won in a candy contest when I was a kid. When you pushed its belly, it was supposed to go Ghetto Ghetto. It turned out to be an incredibly rare prize that could fetch 100,000 yen at auction, but since I was a kid who didn't know any better, I gave it to Sedeka as a present. Ah, frig. <laughs> Sedeka seemed to really like it, and ever since she'd carried it with her. Which, well, that was fine, but... It was old and faded, and when you pressed its belly, air leaked out of its side and made a weird noise. It used to go, get oro, get oro, I think, but now it just made a strange whooshing sound. Ever since she was a kid, she had a habit of fiddling with it, especially when she was nervous or focused on something. In other words, she was focused on the computer. Now's my chance to hide it. I jammed a magazine onto the shelf and moved some things so she couldn't see it. Mountain view. De Mountain view. <laughs> that mountain view. There were quite a few files on the screen. I shook my head, frustrated. Turning 
Just as she was about to leave, I got an idea. I needed to double check my information. She was in theory a girl. Oh, about the magazine line? <laughs> あ、なんていうか、お前が告白されたとしてさ。うん。いや、だから例えばこう言われたらどう。まことに勝手なのですが、好きになってもいいですかって。さっき言ってたやつ。そ、それはいいから。どう。誰か<笑> Weird. Wait, what is this? Eh? Huh? Sister being so polite. That's true, come to think of it. Why was it so polite anyway? <laughs> what is this Takarupa <laughs> shit? Yeah. I don't know either. I don't have an option. It just popped up. What's going on here, cool cat? It would depend on the person asking the question. Of course it would. Okay, we didn't even get to do anything with the choice there. Or... Sedeka stretched out her hand. Oh yeah, eh? sure. これ, これ. She showed me the paper bag she was holding. Oops, I cut it off. Confused, I took the bag from her. Gen's usual changed every time I talked to him, so I couldn't count on it. What was it today? <laughs> Magazines? The the trunk old bastard! I forced 500 yen into her hands. Ignoring her persistent questions, I led her to the door. Reluctantly, she left my room. Phew. Damn it. Sure, this is what I always brought from Gen, but the information on the last one was no good. What the heck was a cool cat anyway? A cold cat? Is it cold because it's dead? Hmm. 100 ways to secretly show your sexy side. <laughs> I needed to hide this too. But I had so many of them now, I was running out of room on the top shelf. When I tried to force it in, a mountain of old papers came falling out. Damn it. No room, huh? What's this? It was an old scrapbook about the murders that had occurred six years ago in Shibuya. I'd bought it from Gen too, come to think of it. I'd already scanned it, but forgotten to throw out the original. How could I of all people be so lax with information? I just had to bundle it up with the rest of my collection. My eyes lingered for a second on the page. Come to think of it. I quickly ran over to my PC. I opened the files on the case that I'd been looking for. My words were a whisper. I looked back at the scrapbook, then compared it to the data on the PC. There was no doubt. I kept looking at it, and it kept saying the same thing. But this? If my hypothesis was right. Oh boy. Strange sumo stickers increasing in Shibuya. Oh, am I gonna read all this? <laughs> Lately, stickers with the face of a sumo wrestler on them have been appearing on Shibuya. Lately, stickers... Blah, blah, blah. You, you, you started seeing them on signs and guardrails all over Shibuya five or six years ago. There are a lot of other stickers put up by graffiti artists, but Shibuya in particular has a huge number of these sumo stickers. Some have speculated that they're a message from a terrorist group or perhaps a cult, but as of now, that's nothing more than a hypothesis. When asked about the stickers, a 41-year-old man who worked at Jinan, Shibuya hair salon, said, They're creepy. 
I wish whoever it was would stop destroying the Shibuya landscape. Sometimes residents will take them down only to see them reappear later. Shibuya City Hall says, quote, We are continuing our community outreach efforts to help stop these stickers from being put up. But also, there are no plans to use city funds to remove the stickers. <laughs> Police have said that placing these stickers on public property is a misdemeanor, but that it's extremely difficult to prosecute without catching someone in the act of doing so. They have no current plans for dealing with the stickers either. The citizens of Shibuya are going to be stuck with these stickers for a while, it seems. Can we click on these? Oh hey, we can scroll down. We can't click on them. I wanna click on them. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna read all this. There's a lot of comments here. We're just uh, browsing the net here now. The scoy! What the heck? Talking stickers? <laughs> so if you go to Shibuya, you get stare raped by sumo wrestlers, right? <laughs> Lol. True dad. Can I get out of here? <laughs> Wait, what? Did he just say that? で、これが今月の7日に起きた事件の週刊誌の特集の画像。何かって それも見た。つうか一緒に見ただろう。で、これがその現場の建物。尾の絵が昨日さらに追加してきた。それも知ってるって。で、これがその部屋の中。は嘘。お前撮ったの until then, Ito had been disinterestedly pointing his camera at the colorful decorations in the hallway, but this got his attention. Of course it did. No one else had seen these pictures yet. この5階から You could always count on him to be interested when it came to new information. で、何お前一人で入ったのかはいや、カラオケボックスに人からカラオケ。オッケー。仕事の間だろ。別に恥ずかしいことじゃない。それに歌ったわけじゃないから、正確には人からとは言わない。So was it really karaoke? Hello, Shark Drago. How you doing? Ah, uh, nachos. I could go for some nachos. Mm. I'm kind of hungry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat after this stream, which I will probably call it in about twenty-ish minutes at two. To be honest, I was a little embarrassed. The guy at the counter, who was probably just a part-timer, had stared at me suspiciously. Maybe I had attracted his attention by coming in during the middle of the day in my uniform, and since I'd never been in there before, he made me fill out membership paperwork. I didn't know how to do it, so it took a long time. And actually, I've never been to a karaoke place before in my life. Epic. <laughs> but yeah, we're playing a visual novel today. Uh, we went over to the gym from the second floor hallway. It was filled with students laughing over who knows what. The whole school was getting ready for the culture festival next week. This year's festival was supposed to be a big one. 
Heihiko Academy was the first private high school built as part of the restoration efforts, and so it was attracting a lot of attention. One reason why everyone was so excited for the school fair was the school's lax rules with lots of clubs and activities. But the biggest reason was the Shibuya Peace and Restoration Festival two months from now. Two months from now, on November 9th, would mark six years since the Shibuya earthquake. The whole five-year anniversary fair last year had affected the whole town. And since the school was in Shibuya too, it would include us. We were just a simple high school, but now our culture festival was being treated as a prelude to the big one, and supposedly there would be TV cameras filming the day of the event. Ito turned his camera towards a group of people pretending to be pro wrestlers. Ito and I were in the newspaper club and it was our job to record the festivities. The principal had ordered that all clubs were to participate in the culture festival and recording the festivities were our way of getting by without having to do much work. Recording video and taking videos was my or photos was my hobby, and more than anything, it seemed like the day, the way that would demand I burn the fewest calories. I couldn't see myself participating in any of the usual festival nonsense, like the baseball team's fried baseball ice cream stand, which was probably just regular fried ice cream in a ball, or the pro wrestling research club's mascot pro wrestling, or even the seance that the mystery club and fortune telling club were putting on together. <laughs> ちょ、ひげを引っ張んだって。もげる。はあ、これ触覚じゃないの。どう思うよ。触覚だとしたら、もいだ方が緩キャラっぽくないか。え、何私、その<笑><笑> <笑>あ、ノーミー。パパカメラ。ひ、ひ、ドロップ。バッティングエクスペンシブ。おい。どういうことだ。カメラ。裏切ったのか。レベル下がったか。いつ彼女なんて突き上げやがった。あ。で、
I'd read that new issue of Cool Cat before I put it away. There was an article in it called Utsunomiya's Fashion Leader. I thought it looked pretty good. If I could wear that stuff, I'm sure. As he walked away, I turned my eyes towards the group of mascot pro wrestlers. ああ、可愛くなくね。もうちょっとどうにかなんね。可愛くないとか言うな。てか別に上取れすって女子限定じゃなくてもいいじゃん。男子もやんなよ。They're Wait, what's this again? <laughs> Are we gonna get to do something here? Quick saved. It doesn't matter. This was class 3-1. Ito's in my class. Most of the class was busy with the ghetto froggy cafe that we were doing for the festival. Some people were ignoring the fuss and studying. Some of the otaku were reading light novels. Did they really think that if they left a paper cover from the bookstore on it, we couldn't tell it was a light novel? They were just trying their best to stay out of the way. Most people were happily putting ghetto froggy decorations or putting on ghetto froggy costumes and messing around. All the clubs had to participate in the festival, but so did all the classes. No one had told me, but evidently several months ago we decided to do a ghetto froggy themed cafe. No, no caffeine in the evenings. Wait, how late is it over there? Are you, are you on the east coast? East, uh, Eastern time? いや、そうだけどさ、そこは文化祭のノリ的なあれでいいじゃん、別に。22:45。Oh <laughs> Or morning, early afternoons go. Ito tilted his head in confusion and decided to get back on topic. I took out my Pokecom and showed it to Ito. Uh, <laughs> I miss late night katans. Just kidding. I kind of miss them too, but it's like um, I found that they were uh, getting really tiring, especially because I had to wake up early in the mornings. I mean, uh, I could go back to like late nights, but then I'd probably just sleep during the day, and I don't. I didn't know if I wanted to do that. Early mornings suck. Yeah. We're, we're trying new things. I'll, I'll give this a new schedule uh, like a couple weeks and we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we should. Well, my biggest concern, uh, Mr. Bomb, was like losing people who were used to seeing me at nighttime and, you know, aren't able to make it in the mornings anymore. So it would mean having to build almost like sort of a new audience. That So I was kind of more or less afraid of that. Ito looked really upset. 
but uh, we'll see. <laughs> Forget them. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice surprise. With the old schedule, I just could catch the ends of your streams if I crawled out of bed. <laughs> JK, no. <laughs> you know, you're one of the late, late, uh, late viewers, you know, Mr. Bomb. <laughs> well, I know how he felt. The Hey Hiko uh, Academy Newspaper Club had been the first in the nation to upload a video version of the school paper to Nikonia. Our papers dealt with anything involving Shibuya. We'd done the special on the Shibuya restoration once that uh, a local paper had written about. We'd won a special prize at a jur city journalism contest and the video got over 80,000 views despite being boring as hell. After that though, I could understand being upset at the fact that new videos dealing with goings on in Shibuya weren't breaking two digits. Oh, <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, I have, like, mixed feelings about switching from the night to the morning. Like, the morning works better for me, just um, in my current life and situation. But uh, I, I feel bad for, like, alienating people who can't make it to these streams, you know? Do what I do. Four hour interval slips. No, see, I didn't. See, that's what I could do. I could stream late at night and then I, I have to wake up in the mornings and then go back to sleep after that. So I'd have like these long ass naps in the day, but I don't know. I, I feel like I would really destroy my <laughs> sleeping schedule that way. Or I would have. I'd be getting used to a very strange sleeping habit, and uh, the weekends would probably make that awkward for me. I fail a napping. A boyfriend and girlfriend walked in, evidently back from shopping. Their arms were full of ghetto froggy stuffed animals. <laughs> Ito hadn't noticed them. I looked at my classmates who were already beginning to play with their new toys and said, this was a personal theory of mine. Smartphones and Pokecoms had become a religion to the modern teenager and the information they gained from these portable terminals had a huge influence on their lives. Some people only looked at SNSs like Twitter, Ryan, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> and others at Achan and Nikonia. So others, some looked at all those and as well as the links they found there. And then some looked at all those things as well as their favorite celebrity blogs, the big ad channel aggregators, and then whatever human site was popular at the moment. All of these people were wrong siders. And the scary thing was that these days, 9 out of 10 wrong siders were teenagers. I always sleep too long and it fucks me up more than it gives me. Yeah, like it's, for me it's hard to take a nap and feel refreshed from it. It's like either I sleep too much. Actually, no, yeah, usually the problem is I'll, I might sleep too much. I don't know. It's like not enough. It's, it's not the right amount. And I end up usually feeling not very refreshed from it. So that's kind of why I wanted to minimize uh, multiple times of sleep. I just want to I just want to go to bed once in a day <laughs> and, and sleep one long block. I, I usually function best that way. Ghetto Froggy launched six years ago with a cell phone strap that had gotten popular for reasons no one ever understood. And then lately, a combination of Ghetto Froggy memes on Twitter. As well as an amateur anime posted to Nikonia, if I remember right, it was a talking dancing frog singing anime themes. I created a fad, though I hated to use this word for something so stupid. I'm gonna usually try to stay up today. Um, I wanna have a full six to seven hours sleep. That would be good. <laughs> I feel like longer sleep sessions, um, I, I operate better on those, so. It amazed me that people honestly believe that the ripet sounds made by the female actresses in those videos were from the original. Or that the original was the stuffed animal that had come out recently and not the phone strap. My guess was that they only got their information from Twitter. <laughs> I, I said that. I said that earlier. This was one of the reasons I joined the newspaper club. I didn't want to end up like them. Anyway. Uh, a girl, evidently the one in charge of the waitresses, was talking to me. Uh, who, who was she again? Fujita? Fujimoto? 
I think there was a Fuji. Nani? Tanaka san. Tanaka. It's just like far from the Tanaka. I was totally wrong. Ano sa kyoshitsu de nagasu eizo no video satsu no koto nanda kedo sa. What was she talking about? Oh, right. They were gonna make their own version of the Nikunia videos where they wore costumes and danced. So no up to ka de kiru no kana. Ko zutto onaji de torun janakte. What? Was she telling me what to do? I didn't volunteer to videotape it. You guys forced me. Well, it's better than being told to dance or make props myself. Ah. Eh,と. He's so awkward. So, so. Huh? Fi, fix, じゃなくて, いろいろ動かせっていうことですか? Move around. Fix? <laughs> <laughs> fix. よくわかんないけど。あ、で、できますよ。アップでも何でも。本当？よかった。じゃあ本番までにどこをどう撮ってほしいかまとめて渡すから。And then she fled. The that surprised me. Don't scare me like that. I was so nervous. I was sweating a little. <sighs> Ito was looking at me and sighing. What? お前、やっぱりやじゅうじゃないわ。What? I more, I made it a policy not to talk to anyone unless it was necessary. This was my first time and in quite a while I'd spoken to any of my classmates but Ito. どうだった?なんか自慢されてなかった?フィックスとかなんとか。<laughs> Technobabble. Damn normies. They'd already started to spread meaningless information. Stop it. Hearing whispers about me in the classroom brought back bad memories. I was starting to have a hard time breathing. I know, a panic attack. I must have looked like I was in pain because Ito was looking at me with concern on his face. I quickly nodded to show that I was fine. しかも自慢でもうんちくでもなんでもないっての。つ、<笑> right. It wasn't worth worrying about. She was just ignorant. Ito looked over at our other classmates who were having fun. Opportunist. Oh. What did that mean again? I knew I'd heard it before. I ran a search in my Pokecon, making sure not to let Ito see. Opportunist. One who takes advantage of any opportunity to achieve an end. So, so that's right. I'm going to get out of here. 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 Ito nodded, annoyed. Good. Looks like he didn't find out. Hmm. <sighs> いつの時代もスクールカーストの底辺にいる俺らオタクは上部にいる方たちに話のネタを提供する運命なのかうん? Hold it. The school cast system wasn't something I cared about, but... おい、僕はオタクじゃないぞ。またかよ。またってなんだ。理屈に合わないことが気持ち悪いだけだ。一石。いい。ぶたなくていい。オタクの定義は流動していて、当初あった悪いイメージは徐々に崩れつつあるけれど。2015年現在でもアニメやラノベやらゲームやらアイドルやらにハマっている人のことを指す場合が大半だ。Kind of. I thought I saw a boy reading a light novel turn toward me, but I didn't care. 僕はくだらないアニメやラノベは見ない。時間の無駄だ。以前、お前なんかのアニメを絶賛してなかったか? なんだっけ?ブラチュ? くだらないアニメは見ないと言ったんだ。素晴らしき金は我が人生や二人のベロニカとかの名画を検索しようとすらせずに同じようなアニメばっか見てこのアニメを見てない奴は庭家だとか言ったり分かった分かったって数列都市
なんか怪しいイメージあるよな別に人様に迷惑かけなければいいんじゃん好きなんでしょうちだってジョニオタだし。It's a Johnny o t a k u s t o p it, please. More than anything. I don't want to be the same as you people. And then the door to the classroom flew open. Okay. A student female was, or a female student was looking in. She must have been in a hurry because she was a little out of breath. She pressed her long hair out of her eyes and was elbowed to come inside. The whole class started to talk to her. She was about to say something about when her foot caught on one of the cables running across the room. She suddenly tripped. She almost tripped, but managed to keep her balance. She smiled a bit and took a deep breath. All the students around her, boys and girls alike, began to move. They surrounded her as if they were welcoming a long lost family member. She answered them with a smile.、Uh, I might buy a mediocre、uh, mic to match my setup. <laughs> Wait, why? Do you not have a decent mic? Or are you saying the mic that you have is not good enough? I felt like our eyes met. I looked away without thinking. Nono Kurusu. The first student council president of He Kiho. Oh, I've been saying this wrong. He Kiho Academy. Mic I have is not good enough, in my opinion. I, I can hear you well enough. Did I sound okay on mic?、Uh, I think I can hear you well enough. Like, it sounds clear on your mic. But、uh, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to listen again. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember the exact quality of it. So we, we can sit down and test your mic if you want、um, when I've got some time. And you got some time. When we both have some time, you know. <laughs> Kurusu smiled a little as she spoke. Oh, I gotta go soon. It's already two. So, so, hold up. So, so, I don't see you. I'm not gonna cause no chill set there. What can she take with her? So, sir, what we say, say, go, must the queen is so it done. Can I save here? Let's see. All unsaved game products will be lost except. Oh, you cannot save? Okay. No. Uh. Oh, here we go. Save. There we go. That's interesting. There's a tips list. Oh, yeah, this is like in、uh, Steins Gate where you get like、uh, more informa information about it. Alright. Okay, we saved. We're going to exit there.、Um, let's see if we can raid somebody. Actually, sorry for suddenly、um, stopping right there. I just noticed it was two o'clock, and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop the stream. Let's see. We've got. Ooh, we've got Tangent Turner with just chatting, and I've never, I never, I rarely ever get a chance to raid him, but now that I have this daytime schedule, I can, I can do it now. We can do it. We can say hello to him. Don't you worry, I'll be, I'll be back with more of this game next time.、Oh, I'm not doing this right. Raid.、Oh, I'm just gonna copy his name. I don't trust myself to like. Type people's names in, apparently.、Uh, looks like he's playing the long dark. Cool stuff. Here we go. Let's go and say hello. And then I gotta run because I gotta go pick up my son from school. So that's why very strict on the two o'clock. But,、uh, anyways, thanks to everyone who came and hung out in my morning streams.、Um, I won't see you tomorrow. Actually, I'll probably do one tomorrow evening instead because I can't do it during the morning. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll 
maybe post details on on the Discord. See what game we'll do tonight or tomorrow night. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next stream.